Hi students, let's start looking at um, when we put a resistor and a capacitor together in a circuit. So it's called an RC circuit. Um, as far as the basic examples to start with, let's look at if we have um, a resistor in parallel with a capacitor, um, in parallel with a current source, and then it's Thevenin and equivalent, which is a resistor in series with a capacitor in series with a voltage source. So if I label this IS, this is R, this is C, and we'll call this VS, R, and C, um, we, we're going to be looking at the step response. So the idea is um, what's gonna happen in this circuit if we apply um, a step input? And by step input, that's like, it looks kind of like this. If our source starts at zero, and then at some time it goes up to some value, like one volt or something like that, um, you guys might see these square waves are actually a series of um, step functions like this. So the idea is if we just look at one of these cycles, what we're basically looking at is what happens when we first turn this circuit on. So when we go from no voltage to having a constant voltage, right? So piecewise, this is actually a DC um, source here, right? So this is, um, with respect to time, this is not changing for this part. And then at this moment, it falls to zero. So with respect to time, the voltage is not changing for this part. So um, we, if we look at what's gonna happen from the moment that it switches from having no source applied to a source applied, then that is going to be the response of applying a, um, a step input voltage. Okay, so it's called the step response. And um, so this, this step response is governed by um, a couple of equations. So if our circuit's in this orientation, um, we can say that, let's see if I label this, plus minus um, Vc of t, and this is plus minus Vc of t, then um, the voltage across the capacitor as a function of time is going to be given by um, initial voltage stored on the capacitor minus R times Is. So this is initial voltage stored on capacitor and um, if this circuit hasn't had any activity before we've applied this step function, then most of the time this is just gonna be zero. But if this is charged up to something before we evaluate this step response in this circuit, there might be already a voltage stored on this capacitor in which this V naught would have a value. This here, this R times Is, is just um, basically from this Norton equivalent. So we take this resistance and multiply by the source voltage. Now this thing here is multiplied by um, a decaying exponential, minus T over RC. Okay, so the voltage across the capacitor here is um, going to be a function of the resistance of the capacitance values that we pick in our circuit. So the value of this resistor and the value of this capacitor. Um, if it's in this orientation, then all we basically do is um, we're going to change this piece and replace it with the Norton equivalent. So basically we're gonna change this to a VS. So um, the equation is equivalent, it looks really similar, but it's um, V naught minus VS times E to the negative T over RC plus VS. Um, and it looks like I forgot a term over here, plus RIS, okay. So that thing and that thing um, are basically synonymous pieces. Let me split this up a little bit. So this equation is for this orientation when we have this parallel RC circuit in parallel with the source. And then if we change it to the Thevenin equivalent where we have a voltage source in series with the RC circuit, then we would change it to this. So basically, wherever you have an RIS, we replace it with just the Vs. So that's just making that feminine substitution. So you might see the equations 
um, look like this. So I mentioned that if we wanted to look at a really simple sort of startup case, let's look at when um, v0 is equal to 0. So this is when there's no initial voltage stored on the capacitor. So um, let me just take this equation here. Our Vc of t would be um, 0 minus Vs times e to the negative t over Rc plus Vs. So this becomes Vs times the quantity 1 minus e to the negative t over Rc. So um, Vs is going to be our maximum. So if I were to plot this V as a function of time, this value of that source that I'm applying to my circuit is going to be the, the maximum value that the voltage across the capacitor can attain. And if you remember from a math class that the shape of this thing here is going to be this sort of exponential function that's going to reach this maximum um, as time goes forward. So in the case that V naught is not zero, then this initial charge would start here at V naught where this is zero down here. Okay, but if we just assume, since we're introducing the concept that um, V naught is zero, then this is gonna, the voltage is gonna start at zero and then ramp up to Vs. So um, let's look back at this uh, circuit for a second. What is that equation telling us? That tells us that the voltage from the source, if enough time goes by, all of it is going to be transferred to the capacitor, right? So look at this graph. So at time equals zero, when we first turn on a DC source, there's going to be this um, change and then after a while, this is going to reach the steady state where the voltage of the capacitor is equal to the source voltage. So all of the voltage from this uh, source is going to be stored on this capacitor. So you can sort of think of this as when we apply a, a DC source to this, and I know when we introduce the capacitors, um, we said that this is used for AC, so we need a changing current in order for there to be activity on this. And the reason why is because if enough time goes by, then um, all of this voltage will be stored here. So it almost acts like a battery. And in fact, the symbol for a battery looks a little bit like a capacitor, right? So it's, it also has these parallel plates. Um, so if that is the, the voltage across the capacitor, let's, um, let's think about what is happening with the current. It's, it's interesting because there's actually kind of an opposite thing that happens with the current in the capacitor. So let me start with the equation. The current in the RC circuit. And remember, this is the step response. So when we go from no signal to a DC signal, um, the equation is the current of the capacitor with respect to time is given by negative V naught over R plus the source current applied times E to the negative T over RC. And then remember for this initial case, we're assuming, so if V naught is equal to zero, so if there's no initial charge um, of voltage stored on the capacitor, then this equation is going to become Ic of t is equal to Is e to the negative t over Rc. So this thing is um, a decaying exponential with a maximum value of Is. And it's actually going to start at Is and then it's going to fall like this down to zero eventually, okay? So let's look back at our circuit. Um, here's our basic RC circuit. So if you imagine that eventually, if enough time goes by, all of the voltage is going to be stored on this capacitor. 
and um, all of the source current that we started with is going to eventually go to zero. So actually what happens is this capacitor is going to break the circuit. And um, intuitively, the way you can think about it is, as the current is going in this circuit, it's going to, that more and more charges are going to accumulate on these plates. And you can sort of think of it as the more charges accumulate, the more they kind of like um, get stuck on this capacitor and the current no longer flows, okay? Because it's all sort of stuck um, on these parallel plates. So after a while, um, this uh, circuit where the capacitor is, is actually gonna look like an open wire. So after, um, after you apply DC voltage for long enough, the capacitor breaks the circuit and it just looks empty like this. So um, if this is the shape of the current, and remember, this is the shape of the voltage. Um, this is what we would call the step response for an RC circuit. Now, if you had um, a square wave AC signal, so let's say it started low and maybe it went up to like 10 volts or something like that, and then it came back low and then back up to 10 volts like this, then what you would see is you every time you basically turned on the DC, you would see the voltage of the capacitor kind of come up to speed and then stay here. And then it falls, and then um, when we turn it on again, we have this kind of um, shape again. So if you were to plot this or look at it on an oscilloscope for an RC circuit, this is the waveform that you would see. You would see um, zero here. You would see this kind of ramp up like this, and then when it would reach the steady state at whatever max value of the step um, signal was, and then you would see it again. Now, um, something else happens in the RC circuit when we turn off the source, and that is called the natural response. So this part here, when we look at when the source is turned on, this is called the step response. And then the response when we turn off, when we turn off the source, this is called the natural response. Okay, and that's governed by different mathematics and we'll talk about that in the next video. So let me know if you have any questions about the step response of an RC circuit.